So we're gonna keep it simple today, you guys. I've got a fantastic monitor sitting to the left of me, one I told you about in a previous video that beats out pretty much any other 4K monitor that I've reviewed. But I've got some good things to say about it, and I have some bad things to say about it. So stick around so we can dive in, uncover all those good and bad things, and you can make a decision whether or not this is actually worth your money and if you should be looking somewhere else. So let's get into it. All right, of course, to the left of me, this is the Samsung Neo G7, specifically in a 32-inch variety. This Bad Bama Jamma is a 4K 165 hertz quantum dot mini LED HDR2000 curved gaming monitor. And just in case you didn't know, here's some specs to help you soak it in on how beautiful this monitor can be. It has almost 1,200 dimmable zones. It's a 1,000 peak nits of brightness and a 1 million to 1 contrast ratio. Unlike most 4K monitors, it does feature 165 hertz with one millisecond response rate. It's an AMD FreeSync Premium Pro, and by my testing, fully compatible with G-Sync. Now there's something about that 1000R curve that really soaks you and grabs you in on this monitor. It's very immersive. Some of the aesthetics would be that it has their core lighting on the front and the back to kind of light up the room a bit. It features a swivel, tilt, and height adjust. And with the included mounting bracket, it does mount to any monitor arm or TV bracket. It's VESA certified. And then of course on the back, it does feature some good IO. However, it does not feature a speaker. Now it has a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. It has two HDMI 2.1s, one display port, two USB 3.0 A's, and of course the USB B for your upstream. Now this guy is beautiful and it is feature rich. The specs are heavy, but that doesn't mean that it's going to perform in every scenario. So as you see here, this is me calibrating through Spider-X. I did find some really good things out about this monitor. So let's dive in. First of all, it checks out 100% of the sRGB, 84% of the Adobe RGB, and 91% of the DCI-P3. It's definitely not the most color accurate monitor I've used, but that is more than enough for you gamers out there. And I did a bit of a brightness and contrast test in here. As you get dimmer and brighter on the back panel, it actually retains a great contrast and white level point. Even if it's really low or really high in brightness, it should retain that picture really well. With those 1200 or so dimming zones in the back, the uniformity should be perfect. And it's pretty dang close. I won't say that it's 100%, but it definitely looks extremely clean. And then with backlight bleed, this is what I noticed. Up front, when you're looking at it straight on, you will never notice backlight bleed on this monitor whatsoever. It's non-existent. However, if you look at it from a side angle, probably like you might be right now through this camera view, if you move to the side a bit, you'll notice an atrocious amount of glow. Uh, it's a halo effect. It's not necessarily what you might call an IPS glow or backlight bleed. It is that it is over brightening certain areas and it doesn't have enough controllable dimmable zones behind to be able to turn certain pixels off. So therefore around bright objects like white text, it's giving you a halo effect. You can actually mitigate that a bit. We'll talk about it a little bit further down the road. Uh, it's not all bad because again, straight on, you barely notice it if at all. All right, so a few odd things happened when I went to go set this guy up. Actually out of the box initially, it's setting was set to some sort of strobe effect. You can see it in the video here. It's their standard backlighting effect. For whatever reason, adaptive sync being on and off changes this automatically. Turn off adaptive sync, go set your pixel response rate, and then turn adaptive sync back on. 
that's going to lock in your setting. If you want to put the low input lag on, other settings on, then do that and then turn on the adaptive sync. That'll open up those menus for you. Now, if you're trying to dial in your brightness, you want to get rid of some of that uh, backlight bleed or halo effect. The full array dimming actually has multiple settings, like a low, medium, and high. And that's awesome because it means a more aggressive, brighter backlighting, able to control every single zone as perfectly as possible, or a more relaxed version where it's a softer light, it's not as bright, um, and so on. And that actually, when you put it on that lower setting, helps with some of that glow, but it still gives you a good brightness. I am I'm literally so excited for this part. Extremely excited. So previous to this monitor, the best monitor I've ever reviewed with HDR settings is by far the Gigabyte M28U. It had a whole separate HDR menu to be able to calibrate color, brightness, all this cool stuff, black level, everything. Well, I have to tell you that that day is over. Those menus are only second now to so far the Neo G7 from what I've tested. If you turn on HDR and you're going to watch some content, you're going to play some games, you get full access to every single menu that you do in SDR. As far as I can tell, it locks absolutely nothing down. Now, there may be some limitations there. I've only spent about 45 minutes or so going through those menus. There's probably gonna be something else that comes up later. Put it down in the comments below if you found something, but so far, everything is open and this is epic so i've got some fantastic gameplay coming up later that we're going to test that out on but for now let's jump in let's see does this fall in line with the va panels that samsung's used in the past and and give that same credibility and name to the pixel response rate input lag and of course motion so let's jump into some blur busters here let's get the the show on the road Keeping it real simple, out of the box settings as far as motion goes, that initial blur busters is fantastic. Absolutely nothing happening as far as artifacting and motion blur and all that other stuff. And we jump into the motion blur testing here. And of course the faster kind of frame rate at the bottom there, there is a tiny bit of motion blur going on, but it's, you know, it's refreshing really fast, extremely fast. It's not terrible little bit of double imaging but of course the most important is our pixel response rate because i think that's the most accurate piece of information we get and the first one that we see is the standard setting on that pixel response rate we're getting a teeny 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 bit of double image at the top 165 hertz but our middle and our bottom frame are looking pretty good uh, they're a little bit lighter on the ghosting it's still present but for out of the box standard settings that's not a bad way to go if you're kind of gaming between 100 and 165 FPS. Now, if you want to clean it up a bit and optimize some of that ghosting, uh, the faster setting is actually doing a bit of a better job. You see a teeny bit of ghosting at your top FPS and then the middle and bottom, you're actually seeing a tiny bit of overshoot, which I think is uh, a little bit better in this scenario for a high FPS gameplay. And then jumping into the extreme, you know, to be quite fair, uh, at our 165 FPS, it's not doing any better. Uh, it's performing about the same teeny bit of ghosting here. Uh, your middle and low frames actually still have a tiny bit of overshoot. I'd say that middle FPS is actually looking a little bit better than it did before. So, you know, you could probably get away with extreme from mid to high FPS. Hey, that's pretty good though. So far, there's not been this crazy amount of ghosting and like triple imaging going on, artifacting or fuzziness to this test. So holding strong in my opinion. You know, quite frankly, I do not like motion blur reduction. It's a strobe effect. We've talked about it before. I've tested it on many other monitors. Yes, it performs well but I never feel like it gives me as crisp of an image as just using standard variable refresh rate with a standard pixel response time. But on a monitor, I don't think the processors are quite there. I don't think the technology is quite there. You can see that I'm still getting quite a bit of double image on some of these tests here. So I'll just kind of leave that off in my opinion. Uh, but if you like to play with it on, go for it.
let me tell you, this monitor shines in FPS games and it dang well better because you are paying a pretty penny and it is some claiming some pretty, pretty high specs here. So of course, I always jump into a bit of Modern Warfare 2 because, you know, if it can perform well here, it can perform well in all your FPS style games. That's my opinion at least. So we're rocking in, we're getting anywhere from about 110 to 135 frames per second. That G-Sync is on because I'm using that 3090 and you can really see top right corner what's happening. This first interaction, oh my gosh, I can replay this over and over again. I just slide in, this is slow motion. You can see the graphics, the grenades exploding, the fragments coming at me. And even though I get killed, man, it's like super cool um, because you just see all that detail in the picture. And even here, again, I get killed, but I dive in on this guy. I'm just playing around. I'm like, hey, I got a pistol. I'm not going to win. And the motion, it's just so clean and smooth. I mean, stopping midair. There's no double imaging. There's no motion blur. It's crisp. It's clean. It's solid. I can just make out detail of every character that I'm chasing down and I can pause in almost any scene and I'm not seeing any crazy amount of blur or, or smearing. I'm not seeing artifacting, double imaging. It's just a solid play. And this freaking sniper, he's been sitting in this hole all game, let me tell you. And I've been waiting to take him out. So I knew he was coming. I aimed down sights and look at him. He pokes his little head out. You can see the glint from his scope. And of course, I just start kind of pre-firing a bit and uh, just lock on a target, man. It was perfect. Took him out. I was tired of him sitting in that little honey hole. But okay, I take care of that. The next interaction is actually quite fun. It just shows you the capability of this monitor. You go from fast pace to slow motion and you just see it's extremely clean. Aim down sights, take this guy out, super easy reload extremely clean nothing funky going on guy comes around the corner as i make my move i stop think about it for a second 180 turn around bam hip fire take him out i mean if that's not if that's not how the story ends for you you need this monitor i'm telling you right now if you get taken out in every single one of those scenarios and you can't make heads or tails of what's going on you need this in your life as you guys know, Apex Legends, it has a lot of really cool, awesome colors and graphics to it that you don't really find in most games. It's more complex than Fortnite, in my opinion, a little bit faster plays, so, uh, a little more fun, depending on who you're playing with, I guess. I felt like it was a good test. All right, so I jump in here, you guys, and colors are looking fantastic, really bright, like full of color, very vivid. And they do that little motion test here. And I've done tests in the past like this with other monitors. And quite frankly, motion's been atrocious on other monitors. And it looks beautiful here, beautiful. That with the mix of colors, the green on the grass, just the difference in color you can see. Let me pause here for a second. You can actually see a difference in color from the grass and the tree here. That's how you know the monitor is doing its job with the rendering of the graphics. These shouldn't be the same exact color it should be able to stand out because it's a different green. And that's the way the video game creator intended it. Everything's looking fantastic. I bet the sky, beautiful, beautiful blue, very lifelike. Objects are crisp, like the geometry in the game is standing out. The little notches, the lines, it's solid. The monitor itself is performing extremely well with all those resolutions, the 4K of them. What I will mention, eh, there's a couple things I'll say about this. It can get a little dark. Like as we make our way into this little vortex area here, some of the detail does get a little dark. It's not really bad. There's more to say about this later. It, it still is 100% playable, but I can see where in a darker game, it can crush a little detail, even at its like brightest setting. Nonetheless, we wrap up the game here. We kind of get to the final circle location and I'm not really that great at Apex. So as soon as uh, some other teammates come in to take us out, I just don't perform. You know, I take a few shots and, and I land them. Looks good, the motion's holding strong. Uh, the clarity, even if they're off at a distance, it looks great. 
we still lose. We get our butts kicked. <laughs> so moving on. In my opinion, Warzone 2 is actually fun. It's slower paced. The, the guns are a lot more real lifelike. That being said, I know some people won't agree with me and that's fine. Initial drop in here on Warzone 2. Uh, this monitor actually blows out a bit of detail. You can see it's very, very hazy looking on this drop in. Um, it could be a combination of graphics card, maybe not rendering as well on the initial drop in. It's a huge map uh, it, that does get fixed later. You see, we kind of come into focus here and we look down and there's actually a lot more detail on the ground than there was before. So I'm playing solos and immediately I drop in this guy. He's got to hunt me down. I don't even think there's any type of contract here, but he feels a need to chase me down. Anyways, take a couple shots. I pause on that shot. It actually is super clean, making out some good detail here. Even as I jump off the building after taking that shot at him, take a bit of a pause. It's retaining a lot of its image quality. In Warzone 2 is a lot more demanding in my opinion than Modern Warfare. It's a larger map. There's more people playing in the map. There's a lot more information and data to be streamed and rendered. So you can see that we're actually dropping down to about the 90 to 95 frame per second. It's not bad. Uh, it's still a playable FPS, but it's definitely gonna affect some of that quality in motion. However, G-Sync is holding strong. I do wanna point out that, you know, a little further away, it's getting a bit difficult with these settings to be able to see my opponent. There's not a lot of high detail at this range. But it is enough that I can point them out. And I don't really have a scope. I'm using brass sights. So to be fair, I'm not zoomed in at all. Now, this interaction, I totally screwed up. This guy's got a three vest. I've got a two vest. I got, I caught him by surprise. He didn't even know I was there. He came up this ladder. I'm actually doing really well. I'm following him. The motion's strong. I'm at about 85 or so frames per second. I pause in the middle of that interaction. I can make out his entire character. But because the gun wants to jump a lot, it is a bit washed out. I'm not able to fully track him. He gets a few shots off at me and I kind of lose track of where he's at. And of course, he takes me out. Okay, and back to kind of what we talked about with Apex Legends here. There are some scenarios where this can kind of crush some detail. It's not bad, it's playable, it's much better than some other monitors I've seen. Straight on, it looks much, much better in person. But as I go down this elevator here, I get down to the bottom. It's a pretty dark area, there's no sunlight. As I make my way up this little bit of ladder here, you can see that some of those areas are fairly dark. Somebody could be hiding there and I wouldn't notice. Even here, I'm gonna pause. I'm up in a tower here and there's shade in this area. This is actually a good thing for me. This is how you can use this monitor uh, to help you out, right? There's a lot of shade in here. It's really hard for me to even see my gun, which means if somebody's looking up, it's probably gonna be really hard for them. Nonetheless, kind of makes it harder to find your sights, to really see what's going on around you, to pick up any loot, anything like that. And that's kind of the one downside of this monitor right now is it can kind of crush a bit of detail while still being extremely bright. But see, it's not too dark in here. I was able to pick up all that loot and maneuver around, figure it out. All right, so that leaves the big guns. We're talking HDR, 2000 people. This is a big deal. Like I said, the HDR menus, they're fully open. You can calibrate to your liking, which means in bright games and dark games and games in between, you can really dial in that color, contrast, clarity, and get your black level adjustment done. You can get your motion dialed into what you want it to be, really pulling out all those details. So here we are. HDR on in Elden Ring and of course I just I got soaked in you guys the first bit I went to go actually record I just I just kept playing I wasn't even trying to do anything special for you guys to be able to see I just found some fun things to do and and it soaked me in but after that I did go ahead and film some things side by side like HDR and SDR side by side and again the initial HDR experiences in really dark areas it can crush that detail. And you know what, I'm okay with that. It makes up for it in other areas. It really does. And Elden Ring's a dark game to begin with, so I'm not even that upset. Oh my gosh, you guys. Look at this tree. This tree is just magnificent. The color that's pulled out of that tree, the detail in the sky. 
wow. I turned that HDR off in the result, you guys. I mean, it's just so much, it's blown out. The detail's not there. That rich amber and red and orange color is gone. The whole landscape is kind of blown out. It's a grayish color. There's no real like brick or stone looking color. Um, and I did a side by side for you guys. Look at the difference there. Just everything is so much more deep and rich and beautiful to look at. HDR wins hands down. But to prove my point, we have a little bit more here. Just a little bit, not a lot. I gotta take my glasses off here because this, I just have to make sure that I'm seeing what I'm seeing. The HDR off, we get to look at the scenery and it's, you know, it's nice. The game looks good. It's rendering really well. The magic out of my sword looks solid. Uh, the moon and the fire looks decent. The, the sky, the night sky looks decent. Uh, but as we switch over back into HDR, look at that. Look at that. I'm telling you, that fire, that tree versus this tree, Get out, get out. Show me a monitor that does that. Come on, can't be done. Well, I mean it can, there are the monitors that can do that. I'm just saying, Samsung, you did a fantastic job you guys in HDR. That micro LED or mini LED, whatever you wanna call, call it, those 1200 zones, dimmable zones of a direct full array, that quantum dot technology, Come on, you did it right, Samsung. Keep doing this. Stay away from the IPS and all that other stuff you've been doing. You guys are fantastic at VA. You're great with that quantum dot technology. You're great with the mini LED. Don't veer off the path. That's what you're good at. Some people may not like it and that's okay. Now, all we have to see is that QD OLED. Get it into this form factor. You could even curve it, but you don't have to. I mean, flat panel's just fine. I don't know, maybe you disagree. Put it down below, you guys, if you disagree with me here, but I think this is beautiful. I mean, yeah, it's a little dark, but look at that fire coming out of this guy's mouth. It just lights up the area. I don't have any lights or anything on in my character, but you know, I could go on. I could go on, you guys. I think this is a beautiful display, no pun intended, of what this monitor is capable of, uh, especially if you like any story-based RPG style game, anything that's darker, that has great quality HDR, Pfft, get out, get out of here. Okay. <laughs> oh, geez, you guys. So that brings me to the end, you guys, and I'm gonna wrap up pretty quick because I think we saw the results here just during the benchmarking, okay? It's not hard to really put two and two together. Do I recommend the monitor? Yes. If you wanna compare this to something like the GQ950 right behind me from LG, the price difference is like zero. They're both anywhere from about $1,000 to $1,300, depending on if they're on sale or at full price. 100%, I'm gonna go Neo G7 every single time. Does it beat out the G70A? 100%, it beats out the G70A. It's about twice as expensive as the G70A though. So it's not really a fair comparison. What you should be comparing this to are some of the newer releases that are coming out. Things with mini LED, there's the new LG OLED coming out. That's what you're gonna wanna compare it to. Things that are $1,000 and up. That quantum dot, that mini LED, that OLED, that's what really gives these monitors their performance in HDR, in contrast, in sharpness, in all of the things that matter. So don't compare it to a $600 monitor with eight dimmable zones from edge lighting. Just don't do that. I'm gonna try to get some of the other monitors I just mentioned for future comparisons. And I am actually gonna do a comparison video with the GQ950 just to see if it really, really matters. Uh, and the difference is that big. So definitely subscribe so you can see those. So you guys, I'm gonna wrap this bad boy up. And as always, I'm gonna put something up top here. This is gonna be the other 4K monitors that I've reviewed. So if you're looking at things like that GQ950, the G70A, the M28U, the Acer Nitro, um, some of the other monitors that I've checked out in the past, if you're like, hey, should I buy those? This is the link you wanna click right above me. You can comment below, ask your question, but if you're comparing, 
click that one above me. All right, you guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.